What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Steve and we are going over Turo and how to make it run as smoothly as possible. So if you're new to all this, Turo is basically a car sharing platform just like get around, hire a car, all these other platforms where you can share your cars and basically make some side cash off of it. So today we're gonna go over the few things that I think that you personally need to know and think about before you jump into this. So let's get into it. All right, so the first thing that I would say right off the bat, make sure you go out and use a car that you already have or find a way to basically broker a car that somebody else already has. You don't want to go out and start overextending yourself buying cars just for the platform just to realize you don't even like this. You got to get into it for a little bit for a couple months at least with just one or two cars to find out if you actually enjoy the process, if you enjoy dealing with all the people and basically having the customer service that you need to make this business run. And like I said, yes, do this for at least a, a couple months with just the one or two cars, however many cars you're able to get to without having to go out and buy anything specifically for this. After a few months, you're gonna start seeing, okay, what, what it actually entails, what, how much time it's gonna take you, what kind of money you're gonna start seeing, and hold up on going out and buying new cars because you will see that, hey, you may have you may have jumped in at the right time, the right month, and man, this car just made you, you know, a thousand to two thousand dollars. And so now you want to go out and get a bunch more without actually researching your market. And now all of a sudden you're stuck with these cars and they're not renting. So definitely stick with any extra cars that you have to put on there first. Don't go out there and over leverage right off the bat. This will save you tons in the long run. I mean, if not thousands of tens of thousands of dollars because you know you you found out what actually is working for your market where you're at the last thing i want you guys to do is go out and buy a 30 40 80 thousand dollar car just to say oh you know what this just isn't for me and now you're stuck with this car so the second thing when you get into this i want you guys to realize that it's not a matter of if but when your car gets damaged okay you're going to be renting this out so don't have this personal attachment don't be putting your personal car on there your daily, <laughs> don't be putting that car on there because I guarantee you, you're gonna be upset, you're gonna be bummed, somebody's gonna put a small scratch in it, there's gonna be nicks, dings, or who knows, maybe the first trip goes out and it gets told. Last thing I want is for you guys to be attached to these cars and then all of a sudden somebody, something happens in it, somebody smokes in it, and now you're just devastated and trying to take it out on the renter completely, you know, just taking it personal. It's not that way, it's a business run it like a business so along with running this like a business do exactly that figure out how much time you can allocate to this are you going to start doing this full time you know are you a, is are you the secondary income and now you're able to do this full time you're able to see how much how big you can grow this or are you doing this as a side hustle while you got your nine to five it's definitely doable going either way with this you can turn it into a full-time gig you can keep it a side hustle but figure out where you want to go with this, how much time you want to allocate to it, and basically what resources you're going to be able to use when you need to do this. If you are running it part time, are you going to have help doing it? Or, you know, if you're doing it full time, what are you going to do in the times where something happens where you are actually out of town or you're sick or something pops up? How are you going to run these cars? So, so, so I want you to think about things like that because those things will pop up. You know, something may pop up where you want to go on vacation or, you know, you get sick and you're not able to manage these cars. So have that in the back of your mind of how I'm going to handle all this stuff when and if that situation arises. Last thing you want to do is leave a renter stranded because you were too sick to go over and, you know, drop off a car or you thought you were going to be able to manage all this from work and now all of a sudden you're stuck and not able to pull it off. So definitely run this like a business. You know, like you would want it to be ran if you were renting a car from somebody. Okay, so the next thing is when you guys are listing these cars, set realistic goals and expectations for all this. So if you're buying like, you know, a 20, let's say 2013, 2014 uh, Ford Fiesta, don't go out there and have this expectation that you're gonna make you know, $2,500, $3,500 a month with this car. Have realistic expectations. Kind of research your market and see what other cars are going for. See how many trips these other cars have. And basically, you can kind of figure out exactly how much this car is making a month based off of someone else's earnings and trips and uh, daily rate. You can figure all that stuff out. 
So set realistic goals and expectations with it. The last thing I want you to do is go out there and buy, you know, a Tesla and you're in a market where you got 200 plus Teslas just sitting there waiting to be rented on any given day or time and now you're just upset because you have this super sick Tesla and now you are sitting on it because there's 150 other ones waiting to be rented out just like yours. So set those expectations, figure out what you want your cars to make, research your market and figure out what's actually realistic for these cars. How much is this car actually going to make? Is it going to be a thousand dollar a month car? Is it going to be, you know, $2,500 a month car? Like figure out which market you're going with and set those expectations. And like I said, make sure you're going off a realistic month, not a holiday month or, you know, one of those peak seasons where everything is just completely booming because then you're going to set yourself up for failure. All right. Now the last thing I got for you guys is do not put your personal car on there. If you are attached to these things, it's going to be all bad. I know I spoke about it earlier, find a car that's you know sitting around, neighbor's car, friend's car, something where you're able to basically not be out of pocket right off the bat to see if you even enjoy it. But biggest thing is, is don't rent out your personal car. And the only reason I say this is some of these renters are just, they can be dirty. They can really destroy your cars on the interior. And the last thing you want to do is jump in a car that somebody's been, you know, hot boxing for the weekend or um, just stuff that they've left around. The last thing you want to happen is your kids are climbing around the back seat and all of a sudden something rolls out and you know, now they're chewing on a pipe or something. You know what I mean? Like keep it separate because I don't care how well you can detail a car. You're never going to get every square inch of the interior of those cars, no matter what. And some of the things that I've seen in the past of what people have left in the cars, I don't want to be around it. I don't want my kids to be around it. So definitely keep everything separated. And the biggest thing is when you are renting out your personal car, it can get booked and now you're stuck with not having a vehicle. Now you're having to rent something else or figure out something else for yourself. It ends up just kind of putting you guys in a bad situation where you're just kind of stuck and now left with stranded without a vehicle. So find one that is definitely going to work for the platform that's not your personal, that you don't have people leaving weird stuff inside and just really stick it out for a couple months. See how you guys actually like it and then from there you can grow and expand and do whatever you need to but do it at a good, decent, manageable pace. Like I said, last thing I want any of you guys to do is go out there and over leverage yourself and just kind of be up the creek if things go south. So hopefully this helped you guys out. If you guys want to dig into this a little bit more, by all means, check the description below. There's ways to get a hold of me and I also have the course on there so you can figure out which cars will work for your market, uh, how, how to expand your fleet and how to grow it and basically how to run it like a business. So once again, Make sure you guys do all that stuff down below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff really boosts the algorithm. And we will catch you guys on the next one. Later, y'all.